Okay, in this video, I'm going to discuss stem and leaf plots and box plots, and this information is intended for um, background information for you as an instructor, not so much to um, give to your students as a flipped video. All right, I'm looking at um, data from two of my classes. This is actual data. Um, from a test that we took and I'm going to use both a stem and leaf plot and a box plot to analyze the data. Alright, so um, a stem and leaf plot which probably all of you are, are, are fairly comfortable with is, is a good tool um, if you're constructing by hand you don't need any kind of um, fancy software calculator. A stem and leaf plot is, is very easy to construct by hand and it's nice for for looking at some um, patterns in, in particularly one set of data. So I'm going to make a stem and leaf plot now for my class one. I have my data organized in this case in descending order. All right. You can put it in ascending order, descending order. Typically, we, we talk about putting it in ascending order, um, but it really doesn't matter. Having it in order will help for constructing both of these plots, particularly a box plot. So, I notice that my maximum is 76, and my minimum is 24, so I'll need um, stems that will capture those. So with my um, lowest observation um, being 24, I'm going to put a 2 right here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this will, um, this will capture all of my data. Each one of these stems are 10s. All right, now I have 76, so I'll simply place my one leaf on this side is a six. In my sixes, I only have one observation, 65. In my fives, I notice I have 53, 53, 53, and 50. So I'll need a zero and then three threes. Okay. In my 40s, I have three, I mean, pardon me, two 44s and three 41s. So one, 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 and what I'm trying to do is line these numbers up here so that um, I'll be able to uh, make some better comparisons here in a second. And a couple of fours, four, four. All right. In my thirties, thirty-eight, thirty-eight, thirty-five, thirty-five, thirty-five. So three fives, five, five. Five and a couple of eights. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Okay. Twenty-nine. Twenty-six, twenty-four. So here we would need four, six, and nine. Okay. So this is my um, distribution for class one, and I would need a key to explain what I mean here. In this case, I might say this. 2-4 represents a score of 24 on test number one whatever the test might have been. All right. So the a good uh, key can serve as, as a title as well, but I'll still come and, and title my graph. This are um, class one scores on test one. Okay. Stem and leaf plot for our class one scores on test one. Some features of this um, stem stem and leaf plot for one you can see pretty easily see for for instance the mode. In this case we have three numbers that appear most frequently 35, 41, and 53. 
Um, you could fairly easily find the median by counting the number of observations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13, 17, 18, 19. There's 19 observations. Since there's an odd number, there will be one number precisely in the middle. And that'll be the tenth observation. So 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10. And, and you can sort of see that this number here would be the median. There are an equal number of numbers above and below it. Okay. Um, the spread's easy to find um, considering the range. You see the smallest observation is 24, the largest is 76, the difference there would be 52. All right, so the um, stem and leaf plot is a real nice way to, um, by hand, construct a plot and, and look at a lot of the features of it. All right. I'm going to leave the construction of the um, class 2 on to you um, if, if you would like to take a look at that. Now I'm going to look at a box plot. Alright, box plot. The first thing that you need to know about a box plot is it is looking at a box plot. Now we will look at a box plot. The first thing you need to know about a box plot is it is um, it lists the five number summary, five number summary. The five number summary is the elements of the five number summary are the minimum, Q1, the median, Q3 and the maximum. All right. Well, we're all very familiar with minimum and maximum and median, which we also call Q2. I think we're fairly familiar with this. This is the middle number in the observation. All right. Q1 and Q3 may be a little foreign to you. Well, Q1, which is also called the first quartile. All right. And a, a small discussion about this term quartile. Oftentimes we think of the first quarter of the data as being the quartile. That's not um, precisely correct. It's used so frequently that it's sometimes, I mean, language does evolve, you know, and if it's used incorrectly often enough, it's that sort of does become what we mean by it. But the quartile is a location. It's a specific value. It's the value at which 25% of the data is at or below that amount. Really, what you can think of it is it's the median of the bottom half. Median of bottom. Okay. And that's often how I describe it to my students. All right. Q3, the third quartile. Okay. Q1, you, you can, the first quartile, you can call this the 25th percentile. 25th percentile. All right, and Q3, the third quartile, is the 75th percentile. Q3 is the 75th percentile. Q1 is the 25th percentile. Um, Q3 is the median of the top. Median of the top half of the data. Okay. All right, so let's um, now look at um, our the data from these two classes and see if we can find each one of these positions. All right, so I'm going to go back to my class one. We've already found the median; it's 41. All right, and more specifically, it's it's this this 41 right here. Why would that matter? Well, it's it's going to affect us a little bit as we find these these other two. All right, so. This 41, this is median. Okay. Median. All right, so we should be able to count an equal number of observations above and below. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine below. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine above. Very nice. All right. Obviously, this observation here is the greatest. This is the max. Okay. This observation here is the smallest, and it's the min. All 
All right, now we want to find Q1 and Q3. Well, to find Q1, all you do is cover up your median, okay? I'm going to cover my median up, and I'm looking at now the covering up my median. I'm looking at the top half of the data. Well, the top half of our data has nine elements. We just counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the median of the top half is that fifth element. One, two, three. I'm looking for Q1. One, two, three, four, five. This 35. Looking at this 35, you'll see that there are one, two, three, four elements below and one, two, three, four above. This 35 here, this is Q1. It is the median of the bottom half. If we cover up that, the median of the entire data, Q1 is in the middle of the bottom half of the data. All right, Q3. Again, covering up our median. We're looking for the fifth observation. One, two, three, four, five. 53 here. This 53 leaves one, two, three, four above and one, two, three, four below. So 53 is Q3. All right. You've just found the five number summary for class one. Okay. <clears throat> class one the five number summary and I can write it in this fashion 24 35 41 53 76 Pause the video at this time and see if you can find the class two five number summary. Okay. So our class two five number summary is 12, 21, 26, 35, 53. In this case, there was an even number of observations, so we had to look in the middle. Um, Fortunately, there were two 26s. There was no averaging involved. Same with a 21. But to find Q3, we had to average um, 32 and 38. That's a sum of 70 divided by 2 is 35. Hopefully, you found um, this five number summary. All right, now we can construct our uh, box plots with this five, these five number summaries. I'm going to um, construct parallel box plots. That is, we'll be able to look at both of these. I'm going to first start with a um, a scale. My smallest observation is 12, my greatest is 76. So um, let me see. Right. I'm now going to construct my box plot on this grid paper. You don't have to use a piece of grid paper. In this case, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to help us see this a little bit. Um, a little bit neater fashion. All right, so I'm going to construct my scale first. Our smallest observation is 12, so I'm going to make this 10. I'm going to count by um, fives in each one, so this would be 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and that'll be all that we need here, 80, 90. All right, so um, we have class one. class 2. All right, so I'm, I'm going to put simple, just simply points where each one of these observation lies. For class 1, my minimum is at 24, so that would lie, this is 20, that's 25, 24 would be about right there. All right, 
Q1 is at 35. 35 would be right here. Then 41 is my median. 41. 53 is Q3. 55, 53. 76 is maximum. 75, 76. All right, so the area from here to here, this is a, my IQR, the interquartile range. This is where the box pot part of the box plot will lie. This represents the middle 25%. This line would be the median. Okay, and what's often called the whiskers would be out here. This is class one. Okay, now I'm going to construct my class two. Min is at 12, 15. So 12 would be about right here. 21 is Q1. 21, slightly more than 20. 26, 25, 26. 35. There's 35, 53, 55, 3, slightly less than that. Okay, these middle three dots represent my IQR. Whisker to here, here's my median. Another whisker to here. Okay. So <clears throat> now we can the design of a box plot, the, the initial purpose of a box plot was to compare two distributions. And you can see the value of this now. Here's my class two. Okay. It is really easy to see that class one definitely outperformed class two. You can see that the entire box plot has been shifted to the right. Okay, some specific observations. Q1 of class one appears to be the same as Q3 of class two. So, and you can see that bared out exactly in the data. In class one, this was Q1, 35. In class two, this was Q3. These two values are the same. Here you see that on our parallel box plots. Q3 for class two, Q1 for class one. Said another way, this person here in class one, this was an actual observation, this person was in the bottom quarter at the 25th percentile of their class, but if we moved them to class two, they would be in the top quarter. The spread is greater in class one. The range, and you can see the range Graphically, the range is just the distance from the minimum to the maximum here. You can see that's definitely greater than class 2. Also, the IQR, and I've said that a couple times and I didn't define it. IQR, which is the interquartile range. It's defined as Q3 minus Q1. All right, it is a measure of spread. Okay, much like the range previously, it's a subtraction. It's a measure of spread. It has an advantage over the uh, traditional range in that it doesn't. It, it is not sensitive to outliers. When you look at the um, the spread from Q3 to Q1, 
we don't take the minimum and the maximum into account so it is um, less sensitive to outliers if you have outliers present in your data then um, IQR is typically a better measure of spread but both the range and the IQR can be easily seen visually by looking at your box plots so the spread of class 2 is less than the spread of class 1 you can easily compare their centers the median versus the median clearly class 1 has a higher median than class 2 in fact every location of the five number summary the minimum is higher in class 1 Q1 is higher in class 1 the median is higher Q3 is higher and the maximum is higher so class 1 on this box plot we can see clearly has outperformed class 2 okay so there hopefully you can see the value of um, a box plot you can see its usage in comparing two distributions with each other um, you can easily find the um, spread via IQR or range and you can get some idea about the shape these these distributions are both slightly right skewed but not all that far from from symmetric it's not skewed in a, in, a, in a crazy amount these two whiskers are relatively close to each other so they're both right skewed but not in a tremendous um, tremendous amount okay that will conclude this video